This video is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock. Hello, and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB, and today in the arena, I'm gonna get that diamond. I'm gonna get that diamond, or I'm gonna die trying. So I'm pulling out the big guns. I still feel like this is the best ladder, best of one deck. Uh, Rakdos Sacrifice. Oh my goodness, I, I said it last format, M21 has come out, and I don't think anything's changed, but the deck does have a couple new tools, not a bunch, but two things that do seem to make a difference. Village Rights is a great way to gas up. This is a synergy deck, so getting your hands on the right pieces sometimes requires throwing away those pieces that aren't so right, drawing some extra cards, and Village Rights is sweet. At one black instant speed, this is the best version of an Alter's Reap type effect that we've ever had. It makes the other ones look silly. One mana is a really low price for this effect, and it goes great with Claim the Firstborn when you're missing that sacrifice outlet. We know, if you watched my last video with this deck where I did say it was the best best of one deck, if you remember that video, I don't play Woe Strider. I think it's kind of a mopey card, not nearly as powerful as the deck deserves. This is an excellent way to make sure you still have a density of sacrifice effects without sacrificing power. But speaking of power, Demonic Embrace. Usually the only thing holding this deck back is getting that last couple damage and getting over the finish line before the opponent finds what they need to break up your synergy. Demonic Embrace gets the job done. Whether it's on a Cauldron Familiar, a Gutter Bones, but especially on a Dreadhorde Butcher, and also on a Mayhem Devil, this thing hits hard, and then it's ready to hit hard again the next turn even if they deal with the threat. And since you have a Cauldron Familiar, you usually always have a way to do some extra damage with this. And it's as long as you have lands and creatures, Demonic Embrace seems to almost assure that the opponent's under too much pressure to do anything. And I found it to be an excellent excellent closer in the deck, and I don't see anybody else doing it. Um, I, I don't know why. I, I think it's definitely worth play. So uh, those are the new cards that we're going to focus on, and then I'm just going to take a minute and talk about why I think this deck is the best one, because what are the things that you run into in best of one? Well, now that Ugin's around, there's Ramp, and Ramp definitely can go over the top of this, but Demonic Embrace is a really good solution to that problem, and sometimes Ramp does its Ramp thing, and you still cheese them out because you have Priest and you have Mayhem Devil. You just have ways to deal damage to them without attacking them. You can claim their Uro, like Claim is an amazing card. Speaking of Claim, what is the most popular best of one strategy typically? Aggro. What punishes aggro? Claim the frickin' firstborn. Go ahead, play your Annex Hardened in the Forge. Play your Rotting Regisaur. Play all the big creatures. Claim the firstborn. Take it from them, use it against them, sacrifice it for gains, whether it be village rights or priest or just some food. Oh yeah, aggro, food. This deck has built-in life gain. It is still in a very aggressive deck, but it can gain a ton of life, and that's a reason it has a really good matchup with Mono Red. The main reason I cut Scorpions from the deck is because I still have all this life gain, but I still wanted Footlight Fiend to just be able to sacrifice two Village Rites, and that's kind of a combo you draw to. You sacrifice your Fiend, and you kill their Runaway Steamkin, or you have Call the Death Dweller, you get back the Footlight Fiend with Death Touch, you sacrifice it to Village Rites, you kill whatever the heck you want to. So I still have Footlight Fiend in the deck. Not sure, not 100% sure if that's right. I have gone back to Gutter Bones because Ramp makes me really want to beat them quickly. Gutter Bones is great against Ramp and Control. It is terrible against Mono Red and other Sacrifice decks. Footlight Fiend is great against other sacrifice decks, and it's great against aggro decks. It is terrible against control, and it is terrible against ramp. So, I'm, I'm splitting these right now. What do you hate to lose to? Ask yourself this question. What do you love beating more than anything? Because I think you'll run into both sides of that mat matchup pretty often. I think you'll see slightly more aggro in best of one then you'll see control. But I mean, if you love beating control, you want gutter bones. If you love beating aggro, you want footlight fiend and maybe scorpion. Like 
if you really just want to beat aggro and never lose to aggro, cut all the gutter bones, add the scorpions, keep the footlight fiends, stuff like that. So it's important to understand that cards aren't strictly better than each other. They're just better in certain spots and certain matchups. And then, of course, we have Call. Ah, Call. It got worse. It really did. Scavenging Ooze is a problem. But if you can make it work, you have Claim for the Ooze. Maybe you can get it. You got to get the Ooze off the board. And if you do that, Call is good. All right. With that, let's dive in. Let the nonsense begin. Picking up where we left off yesterday in a quest for diamond means we need two wins. We'll keep it because of priest and some ovens, but this hand needs help. It's definitely not one of the great synergistic hands we could have. Our opponent starts with a forest and a grazer. Usually this is a good game matchup for priest, but we're going to need cards we can play. Or Priest is going to sit there doing nothing. Drawing a red source is helpful, though. I guess we'll slow roll the red source. We also need one more creature off the top. We run a lot of them. Should be doable. Our opponent off to the ramping races. We are three turns behind them now. Just shows how lopsided this game can be. All right. Well, that's not exactly the draw I was looking for, but I guess we have to apply pressure. So we will. Oh my gosh. Ever since I pointed out the people who are annoying by touching freaking everything, now they're everywhere. This person had to touch every land before deciding whether to block with a grazer or not. <laughs> oh my goodness, they're taking over Arena. We must rise up. We must spread awareness of these monsters. Deep Thoughts, and then Uro. Uh-huh. Well, my day is starting out the way that the last few days have started out. I get absolutely rolled. Like, not even competitive games <laughs> to start my day. And then I have to rebuild myself psychologically and try to make videos. Alright, well that's not an Ugin yet, and they could have had it, so I'm guessing they don't have Ugin. They go for a Nyssa. This land, we are all connected. Four cards in Graveyard. Harness the elements. Fifteen. This hurts, but do what we gotta do, because we have to draw out of this pitiful hand that we've had. Okay. Well, we can attack down the Nyssa and play a Footlight Fiend. Not that that really accomplishes much. But then we at least have some steam for Call to get back. So give me this. You can tap it. It's going to untap. All right. I think one of the big questions is whether or not to use the priest. And look at this frickin' spaz touching everything. Calm down. The Uro comes back if we do that. I think we just have to kill them. If they have Krasis, that's, you know, it is what it is. We could always draw another fiend, or another, um, sorry, I said fiend. We could always draw something else, though. What am I thinking? Claim, if they make a big crisis. All right, so we definitely throw this in the oven. That part's pretty straightforward. Up to five. 
Hopefully they don't get to six. If we play the Footlight Fiend, it does one damage if we sacrifice it, but then we also want to sacrifice this. I think we're better off drawing a card. Because, yeah, if we play the Fiend, they play Ugin, Exile. I don't think they're actually going to, but something to think about. I could also... Can I really afford to draw cards while taking a beating from Nyssa? Probably not, right? Let's be real here. Not to mention getting to block with this Fiend. Means we can bring it back with Death Touch to kill whatever the next threat is. Yawn. Mass manipulation, I suppose? Okay. Let's give you up. The mass manipulation is very unfortunate, of course. Don't. I wanted this in my graveyard, not on the opponent's side of the battlefield. Now, let's see. This does bring back Uro. How long does it. Uh, oh, I guess not if you animate like that, you don't bring back Uro. Maybe they're playing around one more claim. That's a good one. If they're going to keep playing around claim, maybe I should keep bluffing claim. No, I think Priest is worth more than that. Uh, Death Touch counter here. We'll put a Menace counter here. Embrace is good for four, five, six, two ovens is seven, eight. But we know the opponent has Uro, so we have to do better than that. Might have drawn that land. Always another Uro. Anytime, dude. Anytime. Animates the island. Be wary of the ground you walk on. Everybody's attacking. We have a death touch cat. So that's making a block. The forest or the island? I guess the forest makes more mana. We do not throw it in the oven. This actually gets us an extra trigger. All right, cycle, cycle, cycle. Cat, cat, cat. We need a really good draw. Claim would be good. Claim is good. <laughs> We can draw an extra card, too, for an Embrace. But we don't have the mana to cast it. So, if we claim first, then sack to these. Well, we get to draw a card from the attack, but we don't get to cast the Embrace. Because we're going to be empty-handed for a second here. YOLO. <laughs> we have to discard a card if we're going to cast De Demonic Embrace. It's kind of rough. Alright. So, the opponent's going to want to block here. 
There's not a lot to do about that unless I hit... No, nah, there's nothing I can hit off the top either. All right, let's do it. Land. I can decline, but I think we'll play it out because whatever happens next with our mana, I think we want to draw with the castle. Remember, Embrace can't be played at instant speed. We're already in combat, so it has to wait until next turn. Opponent pretty much has to take this chump. They get the castle here. Let's see if they put something on top. If they do, it's probably like a Hydroid Crisis. I think this Footlight Fiend attack was way too aggressive. In hindsight, I think they'd be in a much better spot if they hadn't done it. Two to the bottom. You'll love to see it. Priest. Away with you. Away with you. Village rights. Okay, that's pretty good. Take one from the fiend. We have two mana here, so let's bring back the cat. Play the rights. Still one mana left. Another call. I guess I could get a Death Touch Footlight Fiend and a cat with it. I could also draw a card and save the call. I don't think any of that's right either. They do run mass manipulation, but we do want to keep the cat food going. Down to seven, and we'll play this land draw card. Say go. I'm not worried about the Nissa ultimate. It's not really something that concerns me. The opponent needs blockers. And they're probably looking for an Ugin here, but remember we have Demonic Embrace. So even with an Ugin, we can sacrifice the cat, bring back the cat on end step, embrace it up. So hug your kitties, everybody. Tell your kittens you love them with a nice, even if you're a demon, you can hug your kitten. One to the top. Let's see if it's a good one. It better be. Five cards in graveyard, by the way. Sixth card in the graveyard. That is going to mean Uro. They kept a gross spiral? I guess it means they get Uro and they get one more top deck, which is better than it's the top deck they would have had anyway. So, okay, I get it. I get it. It makes sense. But is getting back Uro even good enough? This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And our opponent's going to 10, okay? Uh, they're also going to get a three, three. So it's not like the bl they're coming in completely unblocked here. Another land. We can also kill the Uro with the Footlight Fiend if we decide to do that. But we may as well wait till our turn. If the opponent wants to attack with their land, we have an easy cat block. But they are down to nothing, empty handed. So, yep, no attacks. Let's draw. That's definitely game. <laughs> We'll go through all the motions correctly. We wouldn't want to come up one short from stupidity. Mm, 
Embrace, pay three life by clicking on your own face, discard the Scutter Bones. Run the Cat Oven. Face, place. Got there. Holy crap. I thought that game was a lost cause after like the second cultivate when we had no pressure and we were demonically hugging our priest trying to do damage, but the opponent mass manipulation, I think they popped that off a little too quick and we top decked a claim on the crucial Uro turn. And that was that. Demon Storm, prepare to meet a demon hug. If we draw a red source, this hand is amazing. If not, we still have plenty of plays. I'm just looking at this, trying to actually make heads or tails of the art, and it looks like it's a gal flying in down a canyon or up a canyon. You can't tell who just sprouted some demon wings. It's whack. Whack, man. Anyway, this is for Diamond. On the draw, hand is, we'll see, it's fine. A red source, of course, would makes and breaks it. Village rights can help us get there. Your opponent with green and green, facing footlight fiend, and they have scavenging ooze. This is legit scary. I'm gonna shock this in. Just having the red source available is a big deal. And let's get priest down and see if the opponent came prepared for priest of forgotten gods. Priest usually a very solid card against mono green. But we are a little conflicted. Do we want to embrace the Footlight Fiend and start hitting the opponent? And they just slam a Lovestruck Beast. Okay. I think we may want to play a Butcher and just give it a hug because this isn't even attacking. We can also kill both of these at instant speed if we choose to, so I like getting Butcher down, having black mana open for the rights, and just passing the turn. So if the opponent does anything, we sacrifice both of these, kill the ooze, they sack the beast. If they do nothing, embrace the Butcher. That's a ton of pressure. Definitely one of the better combos with Demonic Embrace is Dreadhorde Butcher. It also forces the issue if they have a card like Ram Through. Oh, I see, we're going straight to Hengetown. I didn't expect that. Maybe I should have. Should have seen it coming. Okay. Hopefully they're just two life pass. Oh, hi. And they're gonna take it. So if they have a ram through or some kind of interaction, they're not using it. And we'll just keep holding. Still no graveyard for the ooze. The opponent's going to gain two life, but not do anything else, which means they probably have some large creatures coming our way. And there's one of them. How to handle. This is going to be a weird game. I, th I mean, do I want to race? I might want to. Like, creatures in the graveyard is not good for me with scavenging ooze on the table.
Harpooner. This can deal three to the Butcher, but then I can deal five to the Beast. So, okay. They get to exile the hug with the scavenging ooze. Which they better do, and yep, they go right for it. So this is now a 3-3. We need to draw, I guess we have a creature and priest that we can use. But the awkward game continues. Oven? It's not a claim, is it? Let's get this going. Opponent should get rid of the beast, and they do. There's a claim. Lucky. Should have played the um, witch's oven there. I got too excited, forgot I had mana in my mana pool. Maybe it's not punished because of gem razor. Maybe you don't want to play oven until you're absolutely going to use it. Gutter bones is a good draw as long as they don't have another ooze ready to go. There's the gem razor. So I was right not to play the oven. Brilliant. Now a troll. Opponent drawing a million cards a turn off their henge. Yeah, this whole game should have been different if I played around henge properly. Alright. Here's a butcher. Butcher is just a little extra face damage here. Obviously, not going to attack with it or try to figure that out. Players drawing just plenty of extra cards each turn right now. Footlight Fiend. So, I don't think there's a great solution to this Gem Razor. I'm trying to decide if I should just draw a card and get back Gutter Bones and be ready for next turn to activate Priest. Life total is going to matter though, I think. So let's just build board. There's nothing I really want to throw in the oven at all, so I'm still not going to play it. Of course, if my opponent has a second gem razor and they mutated onto this gem razor, I'd probably be really happy about that, right? Yeah, I think that was a mistake too, because if they just keep one gem razor on the field, I make them sacrifice it with the priest. That would be way better than them playing multiple gem razors. Hmm. Okay, that's a good sign. That's not as good. That's significantly worse. And I'm coming for you next. There goes our key card. We're gonna tear you apart. Another castle comes off the top. Rip. Um, they are down to top decks, I think. I've seen too many species die already. So oven, get you back. Just to have some food because now we're in an awkward race where our opponent gains life, and we also have to gain life. If they draw a creature, shouldn't they play it pre-combat in case they draw another Vivian to pump it? But they decided not to. I can't... Yeah, I mean, they had me dead, pretty much, and they played badly. But it does, it's not going to matter. I mean, yeah, if you have haste creatures like Questing Beast in your deck, like, play your creature first. Draw some cards. Come on. 
Come on. Let's go. see a way out that's for sure um let's see sacrifice one sacrifice two three damage kill something definitely not good enough <laughs> demon hug all right good for you but come on man play your creatures pre-combat big brain uh yeah we'll keep priest and hope it's good been having some issues where i don't have enough creatures for the priest Starting to make me cringe a bit. Spitter. Oh, okay. Butcher. Nice. Uh, what do you think? Do we play this and get it killed, or do we play this and get it killed? Uh, this is best because it trades, right? We can get back later with Death Touch. It's fun. Against Mono Red, most of what we need to do is draw Oven and Cat, of which we have neither. Not good. Ooh, Pyroling. New Age Mono Red. Um, let's get this on the board. Make the opponent have a kill for it. And then we need to draw... I guess Call can get this back. Yeah, they have the shock. Easy. Easy game. We need a sacrifice outlet for the claim now. Third Mountain's really bad. This deck is definitely much better with uh, black mana than red mana. And yeah, so we're taking a beating. I guess this is a black source. So we put this out, then we get it back with Death Touch, then we sacrifice this to kill the thing, right? So what is this, a 2-3 double strike when it attacks? It would be nice to trade the devil for it. The opponent probably has another way to deal non-combat damage. Dodgy boy. Hmm, do I kill this? All I have to do is block the Pyroling, and then get back the Devil, and then I can shoot the Fable Passage to kill the Pyroling. But I also still have Claim, so any Sacrifice Outlet solves that. Yeah, I'm going after the Dodger. There's a lot of top decks that get me through this, and you gotta play to your top decks. Man. It's gonna be one of those days, I can tell. <gasps> Alright. I think it does have to be you. The larger body, the death touch, but all basic land, no sacrifice ability. Strong. Opponent willing to throw away the Scorch Spitter here. That or their math is bad. Or the Dodger? I'll take the Dodger. Weird choice. Okay. Give me that. Village Rights, thank you for showing up. Lovely, I think. Let's get the priest down and try to get its summoning sickness to expire. Just an awkward draw with no one drops at any point, which has made these calls a lot worse, but that is an oven. So 
So this with Death Touch is a lot like the devil with Death Touch. It's a lot of extra. Do we get in with Priest or not? I do not want to sacrifice these. Let's get in with Priest. Check for lethal. One, two, three, four. Could have been five, six with the Priest, but we'd have to give up our whole board. Wouldn't have killed them. So, we done? Trying to think if I want to sacrifice the priest, but the triggers are worth more. Oh, that's game. <laughs> we got, we're good. <laughs> we found our kitty. We found our kitty cat. All right, back to the brink of diamond. All right, it's a good hand on the play. Mana, effects. Demon hug. Let's do this. Let's put out the Footlight Fiend first, in case the opponent has something to just exile. I don't know. Scorch Spits. Sure. So, I want to get the Priest online. And I guess we'll play defense. No reason to be that aggressive. Good old Mono Red. Do you have a Priest answer? Of course, of course they do. But no attack. So if they don't want to attack, they probably want to block, which means I should just hang on to this. I guess I can attack and see if they block, and then village rights, because that's what I want to do, right? I want to use village rights here, because I want to hit my land drop. All right, they take it, love it. If they had blocked, we would have sacrificed it before damage and dealt the damage to the, the one point to the spitter because we really want this land. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Well, that's a good draw. <laughs> Can't be mad. into the oven but where is my land if we really need it there's a giant over there okay there we go let's see if the opponent blocks this i guess then we bring it back it's three triggers yeah let's see how the opponent handles the attack of the kitty Control mode. Sack cat. One damage. Make food. Bring back cat. One damage. With that on the stack, bring back cat again. Sacrifices another food. Creates extra damage. Resolve all. Just a fun little trick if you play this deck. Red deck, where are your cards? Iro Helix, sure. You got it. Two good choices. Demonic Embrace, which could be blown out by some weird removal called the Death Dweller, which is just kind of great. Death Touch counter, and I guess Menace as well. Cat Party restarted. May as well have put the counters here, but I don't think it really, don't think it matters. I don't know if we actually so the opponent scoops. I don't know if we actually sacrifice the priest there. All right. Yay, diamond dance. Diamond dance. Diamond, diamond, diamond dance. Okay. But um, 
I think the clock is faster and better if we don't sacrifice the priest, if we only sacrifice the cat, cat, cat. Um, does extra damage, a lot of extra damage. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I think we just let this get shocked, which is something that I think not everybody thinks about when they play the deck. This hand is a hand, 100 billion percent. <laughs> turn two priest, turn three, play like a gutter bones or a familiar, claim their thingy, use it. See if they're ready for that. Our opponent's already like dim like mega diamond over here. I just got my diamond. And there's my neighbor with mega diamond trying to get mythic. Freaking tryhards, gonna make me work. All right. Tapped black source, feels bad. Blue white nonsense. If they have Teferi, it's really like, it's a bit of a blowout here to play the priest. So maybe that's not what we play. I mean, Priest is so bad, though. Yeah, let's just get a damage in with the Butcher. Priest is so bad if they're on blue-white control. Butcher can be so good, though. As long as it doesn't get stuffed in a box. Two to the bottom. I want your blue-white deck. Oh, omen of the thingamabobs, clearly. Well, let's start with an oven, see if they do anything about it. That resolves. Omen of the sun makes two one one tokens. If they have it, they don't seem to. I would guess they have a Shatter the Sky, though, so I'll go with the Cauldron Familiar here. Okay, we're sacrificing. The best thing for Priest is sometimes you can save it to work with your Claim the Firstborn the turn it comes down and hit their Dream Trawler. So that's what we'll try for. Yep, there's the Shatter. I can sack the butcher, deal three, this blows up, comes back anyway. It's too bad this isn't a 4-4. Four, four. Close, but no cigar. Bring it back now because we can attack with it. Keep getting the damage in. And now's the part where one thing we have to be really mindful of is Elspeth Conqueror's death, so we don't want to play anything that can get hit by it. I'm going to deploy... I'm going to deploy one of the priests. With the gutter bones, they can be significantly more damage, and since we already got through one Shatter of the Sky, I think this is more threatening now. Here's Narset, that's an annoying one. Keeps priests from drawing a card if I use it on my turn. We have to keep that in mind. Dig up to fairy. Well, we were wondering where that card was hiding. Opponent with two planes here. This would be a really good turn to draw Demonic Embrace. Just hit the opponent really hard. Another claim. So here's what I'm going to do. We're going to play our Gutter Bones. Going to target our gutter bones. Yes, indeedy. And we're going to try to kill our opponent because they don't usually have a lot of great life gain. Just ignore their narset. Down to six. And we're going to use priest on their turn so that we still get to draw the card. Down to four, three, two. It's very close. Wait a minute. Can I use priest twice this turn? I don't get to draw the card, but I make the mana. I can use two mana to get back Gutter Bones, play it. No, it's one short. It's one. What if I play another Priest and give that haste? Sack, sack. Okay, I think I have this.
No, I don't. Mm. No, I don't. Right? Because the cat has to come through the oven. I don't have the cat on the field, and I don't have a food. I can untap this, but I can't use it again. The opponent scoops it up. Um, man, I was two points short there, right? So what I needed was a food on the battlefield to bring back the cat. If I had that, I could bring the cat back, play the priest, use claim the firstborn, give this priest haste, use it, and then run the cat through for the final two points of damage. The problem right here is I can bring back gutter bones and put it out, but I only have two creatures. I can cast priest, but I only have two creatures. I can put this priest in the oven, bring back the cat. I still only have two creatures. Still a win. It's an okay hand. Um, I'm trying to decide if I want to get priest out first, meaning I want to use the Fable Passage to go get a red source, or if I want to play gutter bones and get in there. And without any knowledge of the opponent's deck, it's pretty tough to say. I think I'll err on the side of Priest since the arena is aggressive and Priest is a great threat. Here we go. We'll need a creature from the opponent to claim though or we're not even using her. And the opponent appears to be more blue-white control. It's kind of a yuck. Here's Gutter Bones. Here's Witch's Oven. And I guess we're attacking for one. I really wish I'd played the Gutter Bones on turn one, but how can you know? Frantic Inventory, draw a card. Then draw on another card for every Frantic Inventory in your graveyard. Currently the number is one. Another card that gets dumped on by Scavenging Ooze. And no Teferi. Cat. Here, kitty kitty. Okay. Attack with Gutter Bones. Hit. Sack these. Could go for the Mayhem Devil. Could go for Second Priest. That's pretty bad against Shatter the Sky. I think I have to assume that something I play here is going to get countered. But, alas, we'll go for it. Be aggressive. Wow, I'm stunned. Still stuck on two lands. We got that to work through. Is it a Shatter the Sky? Of course it is. Let's sacrifice this priest. Let's deal this one. Let's see, if I bring this back now, we get an extra damage, but then I don't have the food on the battlefield, and I get the damage when I attack anyway. Another right. I guess I just play a priest, but these rights are really starting to look bad. Sad rights and claims and opponents who don't play any any creatures. So I think they try to bounce the priest and I think we sacrifice it. No card draw for my opponent. I really don't want to commit mana to that card again. Opponent is probably pretty happy. It's a land, so we can call the Death Dweller, get back Gutter Bones and Priest, or get back Mayhem Devil. Devil's definitely better, right? First, we probably attack the Teferi. I'm trying to think what the opponent could have as a response. I don't see it. I still think we probably do this first. They might have Veto. Veto would be ouch, but they don't. That's good. This 
is hardly my worst defeat. Fairy down. Frantic inventory, draw two. Feels good. Full grip of seven. Plane of cleansing. Brutal. All right, we're going to lose all of our food tokens anyway. So what we want to do here is full control. Hold on. Deal one damage. Make the food. Sacrifice both food tokens here. Planar Cleansing destroys all permanents. So we want to get all the damage we can out of these food tokens. So the operations there are hold full control. Sacrifice both foods with a trigger on the stack. Get some damage. And this is where we fail. God, I needed to play these village rights somewhere. If I look back at this game, I should I needed to find spots to use village rights. That, yep. That's that's enough for me. Ouch. Well, goodness gracious, the deck has turned its back on me. Let's try this hand. Yeah, I think Call is a good keep here because we have the one in the two drop to get back. And there is the Mayhem Devil. If this is the deck I think it is, Luris, Mono, White, Auras, then Priest usually crushes them all by itself. So we'll see what happens. We will, of course, need another creature, which has been the ongoing struggle that we keep having. Not enough creatures in my creature deck. The calls, the claims, the rights, it all adds up. The hug, demonic embrace, it all adds up. And eventually, you don't have enough creatures. We've also missed our third land drop. A lot more than I thought I would. A lot more than I would based on past interactions for sure. All right, we drew a cat. Got lucky. All right, we'll point one damage at this hawk. See if the opponent wants to protect it. The God's willing or some kind of effect. If not, they lose both creatures. the gods willing. We name red. They scry to the top, then they sacrifice the thing they saved. Claim. I could steal this. Well, maybe I can't. I think it's better though to get the devil onto the field. The opponent might have had another protection spell. Part of when I said this was the best deck, and I did mean it, still mean it, but part of it was because this deck got really popular, um, and like it just my deck just dunks on this deck. <laughs> that like um, this black red sacrifice deck is so mean to this deck. All right, let's see if we can steal this, or if the opponent's going to protect it somehow. Oh, oh. That's a feels bad. Here's the bones. Here's the priest. This is... Call it giving them the business. And we drew the land, so if we wanted we could call the Death Dweller. I think it's better to save that. Could also play an oven. I think it's best just to get a gutter bones here and play it. Have another creature ready to go with priest next turn. These ovens aren't even they're not even coming out to play. <laughs> well, that's that's probably sad when they just say go in such a such a fashion. All right, let's drop an oven. 
We can use some sacrifice shenanigans if they have some kind of an ambush card. Doesn't look like they do. Well, I think it's best just to play another oven here and we can bin the gutter bones and run the cauldron familiar. I think I, I could have gotten the gutter bones back after sacrificing it, but I think it's just better this way. Beloved princess. You wouldn't you wouldn't destroy a beloved princess, would it would you? Would you CGB you monster? I would. I'll show you. I'll I will show you that I have I am heartless. I really am that mean. Solid footing. Okay. Is it a 2-2? Two -two? Sure. Give me my food. I can do that. I can, I can, I can do that. Sentinel's mark. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I can, I can do that too. Not enough. Not enough. They're a good sport. That was a, that was lopsided and pretty ugly, quite frankly. That was ugly. And we are back for the post-game wrap-up. We got that diamond, but I, I feel like this deck is incomplete. Maybe my draws weren't at the top level that they could have been. But as I talked about, I think I'm just short on creatures. I, I just had a lot of weird draws where I didn't have the creatures. So I think I do need to tr do some trims, and I think it might be something along these lines. Maybe just one embrace, maybe just one call for the gotcha moment. Footlight Fiend was kind of disappointing to me, to be really honest with all of you. I do think Gutter Bones did good, so I want to keep Gutter Bones around. And then it's six other cards. They probably need to be creatures. I miss Scorpion a lot. So I might try that card out. Scorp. Scorp, where are you at? I guess it would help if I opened this. Still learning how to use this interface, but anyway, you cool kids are going to get kind of my final build, so to speak. I guess with that, I still want like maybe two Call the Death Dweller, two Embrace is still fine because I do feel like I need more top end and more oomph when I run Scorpion. So Gutter Bones, Scorpion, Footlight Fiend, two rights, one of each of these. I feel like it needs more. I don't know. But try this out. See how it goes. Uh, maybe cut it down to two scorpions. And then two of these. Yeah, I think that, honestly, that sounds nice to me. We could just cut Footlight Fiend entirely. But especially if we're going lower on Call the Death Dweller, one of the best reasons to have Footlight Fiend is because Call gets it with Death Touch. But maybe... A full-on split like this, giving you versatility and a variety of matchups is where it's at. And then we can still have our two ofs here. How many creatures is that? 24 plus 4 claims. We should be able to use our priest a bit more than we saw in the video. So this is the build I'm going to recommend here at the end of the video. So when you go through comments and you see people saying deck list is not the same as list in video, you can tell them watch till the end if you want to assert your cool club status but this is what i would go try on ladder let me know how it goes for you and thank you for watching this video as always i will see you in the next video goodbye